Hello to everyone. I welcome you all to my video. Now, in this video, you're going to look at how to calculate the economic order quantity. We are going to look at some of the assumptions and some of the limitations of the economic order quantity. I'll show you how to calculate the different stock levels, maximum stock levels, minimum stock level, the reorder level, how to compute the number of orders made in the year and many, many, many other issues related to accounting for materials, most especially computations about EOQ and stock levels. Now, this is your tutor, Senia Huntington. I created this YouTube channel mainly to assist students of accounting and students of business courses where uh, accounting is one of the cost units, cost accounting, management accounting, and many other related cost units to accounting. Still, this channel will help all students at the certificate level, diploma level, the undergraduate level, as well as uh, the postgraduate level. Still, it will help the CPA students because uh, most of the CPA papers most of these papers are accounting-related papers, and most of the content of those papers, you'll find it on my YouTube channel. Therefore, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Don't forget to share with those other friends. As long as you believe that the content on my channel helps them in their studies. Let me take you back to my sample question, which we are going to use to see how we can deal with it, today's issues. So we have a sample question here. Explain three limitations of the economic order quantity. Abila limited extracted data from their books of accounts regarding the usage of stock of items as below. Minimum consumption, maximum consumption, uh, we also have the order period, economic order quantity, as well as the annual demand. What are we required to do? We are required to calculate the order level, minimum stock level, maximum stock level. Then we are also required to calculate the number of orders to be made in the year. Now, of course, when you try to look at this simple question, they are asking for the limitations of EOQ. They are asking for some of the limitations of EOQ. So we need to first understand what EOQ is briefly before you go into its assumptions and limitations. Because for you to get the limitations, you need to be knowing the assumptions of EOQ. So let us first try to look at what EOQ is. Though previously I had created a video about EOQ, please, you can check it out from my channel still. It's there. But just a small recap. Let us see what EOQ is. Now, when we talk about EOQ, this is the quantity of materials. EOQ is simply the quantity of materials, which is to be ordered. which is to be ordered in one time, which is to be ordered in one time, in order to minimize inventory costs, in order to minimize the inventory costs. in order to minimize the inventory costs. What are the inventory costs? That is ordering and the holding costs. That is ordering and holding and holding costs. How do we calculate EOQ? EOQ simply equals to 2DO over H. That is the formula for calculating EOQ. You need to know that where this D, D represents what we call the annual demand, 
Four is the ordering cost per order, the cost you incur to make an order, then H represents H represents the holding cost. H represents the holding cost per unit. H represents the holding cost per, per unit. Now this EOQ, of course, it's based on assumptions. You need to understand some of the assumptions before we look at the limitations. Because the limitations, we get them from the assumptions, okay? We get the limitations from, from the assumptions. Now, some of the assumptions of EOQ, assumptions of the EOQ model or the EOQ approach. Now, under the assumptions of EOQ, uh, the model assumes that uh, there is there is a known there is a known constant stock holding cost per, per unit. In brackets, H. So your holding cost per unit is known and it is assumed to be constant. So that's one of the assumptions on which this EOQ model is based. That there is also there is known constant. There is known constant. Uh, there is known constant uh, ordering cost. Per order. That there is a known constant holding cost per order. Then they are also telling us that uh, the rates of demand the rate of demand is known and constant. Rate of demand is known and, and constant. That is another assumption of EOQ. Then in addition to that, they are also telling us that uh, there is a known constant purchase price per unit. There is a known, const a known constant purchase price per, per unit. So those are some of the assumptions of the EOQ model and many other assumptions. But now we want to see, because the first part of the question requires you to explain three limitations of the EOQ approach or the EOQ model. But now we have these assumptions. One thing you need to ask yourself, are all these assumptions realistic? Are they realistic when you try to relate them to the real world? Are all these assumptions realistic? Are they true? Of course, all these assumptions are not realistic. The assumptions are not real. The assumptions are not realistic. So we get the limitations from the assumptions. We just need to criticize these limitations one by one by one because none of these assumptions is realistic. Now, when it comes to the limitations of the EOQ model, I'll say the model assumes that the annual demand it assumes that the annual 
demand, it assumes that the annual demand can be predicted. Can be predicted. It assumes that the annual demand can be predicted. And constant usage. And constant usage applies. Applies throughout the year. You say this is not realistic. This is not yeah, realistic. We may not, it may not be possible to predict the annual demand. And then the constant usage that is assumed, these assumptions are not realistic. So this is one of the limitations of the EOQ. We cannot predict the annual demand, okay? Because we have, we expect changes, uncertainties in demand, of course. You expect uncertainties. Either the demand may fall or the demand may increase. The demand may increase. So we cannot predict the demand with that certainty as assumed in the EOQ model. Then when it comes to predicting the ordering costs, that is also something which is not realistic and true, okay? So we can say some of the holding costs Some of the holding costs are extremely difficult to estimate. Uh, extremely, this is X. Are uh, extremely difficult to estimate. Are uh, extremely difficult to estimate. Okay. Are extremely difficult to do what? To estimate. For example, for example, what? For example, um, uh, obsolescence costs. Obsolescence. The costs of inventories uh, or materials becoming outdated. Hmm? Obsolescence costs and material handling. Such costs cannot easily be estimated or predicted as the assumption, as the model assumes. Then the other point is the cost of placing an order are assumed to be constant, but those costs can never be constant. Okay? Costs of placing an order are assumed to be constant. Are assumed to be what? Are assumed to be constant. Are assumed to be constant. This is not true. This is not, this is not true. Those costs can keep on changing. They can change. The cost can do what? The cost can change depending on the size of the orders. So it's not true to say that uh, the ordering cost per order are known and they are assumed to be constant. That is not true. Then the other point maybe which you can talk about under the limitations. This is the limitation number four. Uh, CVP analysis, sorry. Uh, EOQ, the other limitation, uh, we can say that the cost per order, cost per order is difficult also to estimate. The cost per order is difficult to estimate. The cost per order is difficult to do what? Estimate most especially, most uh, 
most special most special uh, most especially what most especially the relevant other costs eh? most especially the relevant other costs most especially relevant order. So it's not easy. It's not easy to, uh, to estimate the cost per the relevant cost per order, as the model assumes, and many many other assumptions. So those are some of the assumptions of the EOQ, and then the limit, and then the limitations of the EOQ. Limitations you get them from the assumptions because not all those assumptions are realistic. So if they ask for the limitations, simply criticize the assumptions. Uh, when I take you back to the question, you have reorder level, you have the reorder level, minimum stock level, uh, maximum stock level, and then the number of orders to be made in the year. They want you to come up with these computations, one by, one by one. But of course, we need to know what reorder level is first. Now, when you talk about reorder level, uh, reorder level in cost accounting, reorder level. This is the point. Point at which Point at which the storekeeper. Point at which the storekeeper should initiate. Point at which the storekeeper should initiate. Uh, purchase requisition for fresh supply. Should initiate a purchase requisition. For fresh supply. For fresh what? For fresh supply. So if you want to make an order for new supply, then of course there is that point. When our stock level reaches that point, then that will be a signal that we have to place. We have to place an order for the supply of new stock. So that is the reorder level. Whenever our stock reaches that level, then we have to place, we have to place an order. How would you calculate the reorder level? Reorder level equals to the maximum consumption. Maximum consumption times the maximum reorder period times the maximum reorder reorder period therefore in this case our reorder level the maximum consumption is this that is our maximum consumption so i get 10 for 50 units times the maximum reorder period the maximum reorder period is 25 the time, 25 weeks. So when you multiply, what do you get as your reorder level? Let's try to check and see what we get. 10 for 50 times 25. This gives you 261. 250 units. So that is your reorder level. This is your order level. This is your order. That is your order level. That is our order level. What else do they want you to calculate? They also want you to calculate the minimum stock level. Minimum stock level. Let me do that here. Minimum. Minimum stock level. 
Now, what is minimum stock level? When you talk about the minimum stock level, this represents the minimum quantity of items. Minimum quantity. Minimum quantity of an item. Minimum quantity of an item of material. To be kept, minimum part of an item of material to be kept in the store at any time, at any time. The minimum quantity of an item of materials to be kept in the store at any time. Yes, you're going to keep different quantities but of course, for certain items or materials, there will be that minimum that should be there at least, okay? So that minimum is what we call the minimum stock level. Uh, so that stock level has to be maintained. We cannot go below that stock, that stock level. We cannot go below that stock level. How do we calculate the minimum stock level? Now, to calculate the minimum stock level, the formula is reorder level. We have to get our reorder. We have to get our reorder level. Then we minus the normal consumption. Normal consumption. We minus the normal consumption. In bracket, normal consumption. Timers the normal reorder level. Time was the normal, the normal reorder period, rather. Time was the normal reorder period. Therefore, my minimum stock level, therefore, my minimum stock level The minimum stock level will equal to our reorder level. Our reorder level is how many units? We have the reorder level somewhere here. Our reorder level is two, six, one, two, fifty, minus normal consumption. How do you get normal consumption? To get normal consumption, we get our maximum consumption which is 10, 4, 50, 10, plus the minimum, which is 5, 4, 40, divided by 2. That gives us the normal consumption. Then times the normal order period. Normal order period is the same as your average order period, whereby you have to add the minimum reorder period plus the maximum, then you divide them by two, okay? So we have the normal consumption, which is this. Then normal reorder period, I'll get 15 plus 25. We get the maximum plus the minimum period. Then we divide by, divide by. Therefore, our minimum stock level will equal to two six one two fifty ten minus the normal consumption. Let me do that on my card here. Normal consumption we have ten four fifty ten the maximum plus the minimum of 540, we divide that by two, we get 7945, then time was 15 plus 25, we divide that by two, we get 20. So our minimum stock level, 
9.5. Our minimum stop level is 102 three fifty units. That is our minimum stop level. One hundred two thousand three hundred fifty units. Now we also have to calculate what we call uh, the maximum stop level. We have to calculate the maximum stop level. Maximum stop level. So this is Roman 4, where we are required to calculate the maximum stop level. Maximum stop level. Now, what is maximum stock level? We have seen what minimum stock level is. Maximum stock level is the stock level. Stock level above. Stock level above which stock should not be allowed to rise. Should not be allowed. Rise. Stock level above which stock should not be allowed to rise. That is what we call our maximum stock level. Of course, if stock goes above this maximum stock level, it will be overstocking. And of course, there are demerits or there are disadvantages related to overstocking. But uh, that will be for the next lecture. Today, we just want to see how we can calculate the maximum stock level. Now, how will we calculate the maximum stock level? Uh, to calculate the maximum stock level, we get our reorder level. Then we add, uh, we add the EOQ. We add our EOQ. We add the EOQ, then minus. The minimum consumption times the minimum reorder period. It was the minimum reorder period. Now our reorder level, what was our reorder level? Let me take you back and see our reorder level. Our order level, our reorder level, what was the order level? Uh, I've not, I have not noted it down, but I think I can compute it again, the reorder level. Our reorder level. Uh, reorder level, maximum. Consumption timers. The maximum, the maximum reorder, whereby we got twenty four fifty ten, twenty five. Yeah, giving us so our maximum, our reorder level is uh. Two six one two fifty ten units. That is what we have. Then the EOQ which we have to add is uh, ninety eight thousand units. That is the EOQ ninety eight thousand units. So plus ninety eight thousand units. Then minus the minimum consumption. Our minimum consumption as per the question is 5,440 times the minimum order period, which is 15 weeks. 
This is 261, 215, plus 98,000, which is our EOQ, minus minimum consumption times minimum order period. That is 540 times 15, which gives us 81,660. So 261,250 plus 98,000 minus 81,660. This gives us 189,390 units. So that is our maximum stock level that is our maximum stock that is our maximum stock level that is the maximum stock level yeah this is our maximum stock level don't forget our minimum stock level was uh our minimum stock level was what uh, we had to get our reorder level which was two, which was 261 to 50 uh then we minus no more consumption minus uh no more consumption no more consumption was what to get no more consumption we had to get our maximum then plus 5440 by 2. This gave us 79.5. I don't uh, note this down. Then uh, I was, we had to multiply the normal order period, which is 15 plus 25, divided by 2, that is 20 times 79.5. Uh, minus two six one two fifty. Yeah, so this is our maximum stock level. Your minimum stock level was uh, our minimum stock level. Our minimum stock level was how many units was uh, one hundred two. 1,350 units. That's what we have. Then the other part of the question requires you to calculate the number of orders to be made in the year. Calculate the number of orders to be made in the year. That is Roman, that is Roman what? That is Roman of the question. Number of orders to be made in the year. Now, number of orders to be made in the year. Here we get the annual demand over the EOQ. Your annual demand was given as 98,000 units, and the EOQ, sorry, sorry, sorry. And your demand, yeah, and your demand was given as 882. Do we have it in the question? Yes, 882. And your demand was given as 882,000 units, 882,000 units. Over the EOQ, the EOQ has been given as 98,000 units. So how many orders do we make? In a year that is 882,000 divided by 98,000 units. This gives us nine orders. So in the year, this company will make nine, will make nine orders. They'll be placing orders of 98,000 units. Every time they make an order, they will be ordering for 98,000 units. And in a year, they will end up making nine orders 
to make the annual demand to be 882,000. So that is it all. Thank you for watching. Thank you all. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel because I believe uh, you will benefit a lot when you subscribe uh, to this YouTube channel. I remain Senior Huntington. Let's catch up uh, or let's meet in the next session. Bye bye to you all.